So yesterday we went as a family and saw Ridley Scott's latest film, his epic, uh, well his two and a half hour um, film of Napoleon with Joaquin Phoenix starring as the titular Corsican. The movie is, it's long and it doesn't help that I developed a raging migraine about halfway through. Don't know if I can blame the movie for that, though. <laughs> In any case, uh, it starts with Toulon, I think. Um, Napoleon's victory at Toulon, in which he was promoted to Brigadier General and goes through to his death. But if you've heard the criticism that it is Napoleon's greatest hits, it that's not wrong. It is almost like a timeline of events. Um, you get various battles with the date and information on screen, and there isn't a lot of connective tissue. I think the idea was to use the time with Josephine um, as the connective tissue, but of course, Eventually, if you know the history, and if you don't, you're going to be spoiled right now. Um, if you don't want to know the history, if you just want to go in seeing Napoleon um, without knowing that background, stop watching now. But uh, at the point at which Napoleon divorces Josephine and remarries, um, you see Josephine kind of recede to the background. So it doesn't work entirely as connective tissue, even though he continued to love Josephine for the rest of his life and wrote to her like daily uh it's um it didn't quite in the film work as the through line uh because of her removing to la maison and doing her own thing i guess uh it, it, people say it's a an uneven portrayal, a quirky portrayal. I think I understand what they were going for. I think the idea was to understand that <clears throat> Napoleon was grandiose at times, but also severely insecure and needed the kind of constant validation of his mother and his wife to shore him up in those moments. But he was full of bravado when in front of his men or other men in general, it seems like. Um, and I do think it's, it's, it's a portrayal that's trying to be well-rounded to show him as not just one thing or the other, but as this person who had weird sense of humor and, you know, strange, strange ways of doing things sometimes. Um, so I see what it was going for, I think. Uh, and this is, of course, just my supposition, too. It, that might not have been the point at all, but that was what I feel like they were attempting. But it does at times just seem erratic. And maybe again, Napoleon was kind of erratic. So it's not out of step with maybe his character. Um, there were some funny lines and it's again one of those things where you're like was that meant to be funny because we will be quoting them forever in our house uh, destiny has brought me this lamb chop uh is going to be something we say frequently i think um you think you're so great because you have boats uh, is another good one um but overall like we walked away uh, the family was kind of met about it. One of my kids was like, absolutely, he was just like, I didn't like that at all. Uh, you feel, by the time you get to Waterloo, you're feeling the length of the film. It just feels very long. They gloss over Napoleon's second marriage and you see the young, um, what was she, like an archduchess of, uh, or a princess of Austria or something, right? Austria-Hungary. But, um, you, you see her briefly, you see that she gives him the son that he's been looking for, and you never see her again. Like, there are just a lot of, as they say, it's like a highlight reel of, of things that I'm sure they felt like, well, these are the things that we absolutely have to include because these are Napoleon's big successes and his big failures, but 
I almost wish they had focused more on him and less on the military stuff, although Ridley Scott obviously does a fantastic job with the war, you know, imagery, like, that's where the budget is, right? All these epic battle sequences. But yeah, by the time I got to Waterloo, I was over it. Uh, <laughs> and um, I almost wanted, though, over the Waterloo, I wanted like some kind of weird, slowed down instrumental version of the ABBA song to play over it. That would have been kind of fun and, and cool and strange, but <laughs> no, guess not. Maybe that's, maybe that's a step too far for even as strange as this film is. There is like, people have said there's like a four hour version of it that might come to Apple TV. I'm like, I do not need another like hour and a half of this. I don't know if that version has that connective tissue, feels less choppy, feels less like a, a timeline that you're checking off like the various battles or whatever. But even if it does, I think, I, I think the film I wanted was less his battle history and more just like him as a person maybe even like if they had focused on his personal life more but that's again not a Ridley Scott movie that's that's somebody else making that movie I assume because that doesn't that wouldn't fit with Scott's typical thing I don't think um the blue filter throughout this movie oh my god though I just everything's so murky and dark because of this filter that's just it's unnecessary you can you can uh, you can wash things out without turning everything blue and by again by the end of the movie I was like Ugh, can, can we stop with this filter um, <laughs> but overall like it was fine I don't ever need to see it again I don't ever need to watch the director's cut like I wouldn't I wouldn't say I missed any like if I had never seen it I wouldn't miss anything except those couple of lines that were fun and will be fun to to turn into part of our family quote book but yeah I mean it was okay it's long it's like it's not it's long and broad as opposed to deep if you think of it that way like um, I, I I think Joaquin Phoenix actually did really well with what he had and again it's that it's a difficult he Napoleon's a, a difficult character to to get into the head of I would assume um so I do think Phoenix did a good job I mean I've heard some people say you know oh he needed more direction he was a little too all over the place but I do think maybe Napoleon was a little all over the place and and it would be it would be hard to play Napoleon I mean you could play Napoleon as just this megalomaniacal megalomaniacal uh, you know dictator type or this like sopping overly you know needy um, mama's boy and I think kudos to Joaquin Phoenix for attempting to show multifacets and, you know, and do something with this because, um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, it was, it was, it was okay. Uh, I might have enjoyed it more if the migraine hadn't happened. <laughs> well, I, I definitely would have enjoyed it more if the migraine hadn't happened by the end of the movie, though. I just, my, uh, my head was pounding. I just, uh, it was, it was the kind of migraine, I haven't had one in a long time, but it was the kind of migraine where you feel like you're going to be sick. Um, like you're nauseous and everything. So that's probably not the movie's fault, but <laughs> if you watch it and get a migraine, let me know. We'll compare notes. Maybe, maybe there's something else going on there. Oh no, Crowley, do not. <laughs> Crowley's in here. I'm sure you can tell that I've been like petting him and he's rolling around. He's been on my lap and all this stuff. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, if you've seen it, let me know your thoughts. Um, did you love it? Did you hate it? If you know anything about Napoleonic history, uh, let me know your thoughts about that. I, I didn't think of it, you know, people were like, oh, it's so anti-French. I didn't, I mean... <laughs> 
did Napoleon give the French a bad name? Like, I think when he was winning, they didn't like it because he was winning. And then when he was losing, he was easy to make fun of. But I think any ruler feels that way about any other ruler. So um, we see Napoleon being childish towards, you know, other, you know, rulers in other countries too. And I just think sometimes that's just the way they behave. And so was it anti-French? I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say so because I think none of them behaved particularly, like Alex, Tsar Alexander the first was like clearly not it. I couldn't really get a sense of Francis. Um, but he, he might have been the only one who had any kind of sense. Um, the Duke of Wellington is somebody who took an awful lot of credit for the fact that, to be honest, and this the movie doesn't make this very clear, he was kind of losing before Prussia came in and saved him at Waterloo. So uh, <laughs> um, for somebody who, who's very like pleased with himself as having won at Waterloo, uh, he didn't do that on his own, and uh, he might not have won at all uh, otherwise. So, you know, <laughs> but anyway, that's um, yeah. neither here nor there. The movie does what the movie does. My horse-minded uh, child spent most of the movie picking out which horses got reused in different shots and it was like he was on a dis different horse in this one than in this one I said well I think they you know they do the the closer shots different than the longer shots and they might have swapped horses between shoots and you know <laughs> but like <laughs> if that tells you anything that child is not interested in um history so Napoleon probably just wasn't their kind of movie to begin with but um but there were horses, uh, and the like. We said the war scenes are um, expansive and well done. And other than that, I mean, you know, you go. It depends on why you're going to see this movie. If you're going to see great cinematography, uh, what you can see from behind a blue filter, anyway. And uh, it, I, yeah, I don't know. I'll stop rambling. Like I said, if you've seen it, let me know your thoughts. Um, if you're a fan of Napoleonic history, I only know some of the basics. Um, then, you know, let me know what they did and didn't do well. Um, what'd you think? Will you see it? Uh, you wait for it to stream? Will you watch the four hour cut? Let me know in the comments and uh, until next time, take care.